hands on it's a hands on meeting and a hands on um, on this um, Amit, you want to start? Yes. Um, so we have both selection open. You can also, if you have any questions, you can also just raise your hand. I will let you speak. Or if you don't want to just raise your speak directly, you can either type in the select um, or, or even the chat here on the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, Amit, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So you guys can see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see it here. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I guess we can get started uh, for today's hands-on session. Um, um, so if you have any questions, uh, please post um, in the Slack channel as we go. Uh, if you encounter any issue in, in terms of running or um, encounter any error, um, and TAs will be able to help you. Uh, so I have... Um, um, four TAs uh, for my session and I would like to thank them for uh, helping me uh, in preparing this um, material. And basically we will use uh, this same uh, Slack channel, um, July 29, August 1 Jet Physics uh, for today and uh, Monday as well. So first uh, I would like to just go through the prerequisite um, that is required for uh, my session. And since um, if you haven't uh, updated your uh, Jetscape code and summer school uh, 2020, uh, 2022 um, repository, uh, please go ahead, um, um, follow these commands um, and um, also download the uh, Hydro Medium profile um, by going to uh, following uh, directory in the summer school, uh, July 29 jet session, you will find a script that says get Hydro profile. Uh, so I think I posted already uh, in, in Slack uh, that one should have done this uh, before uh, beginning this session because it will uh, take some time to download uh, this uh, Hydro profile. So first, uh, I would just like to know if uh, everyone has completed these uh, three steps um, so, so that we can move uh, ahead. So please give me a green thumbs up, tick, um, if you have completed. Yeah. Any any response from the <laughs> from the students? Yeah, I see people. Uh, uh, they're tick, green tick marks. So I see twelve people right now um, with tick marks, uh, green tick marks. So, um, I will maybe wait for uh, five minutes. There is also a uh, direct link also to download these uh, profiles. Um, in the instruction. I'll just wait for a couple minutes um, to set this up. And also um, you, in the instruction, um, you would have downloaded um, these external packages, LBT, music and ISS um and build it um build the jetscape package
So in my case, um, I have already built uh, Zscape framework. So if I do make it should um, not do anything because I haven't changed any uh, scripts. So if you if people have built the Jetscape package, uh, please uh, use this green tick uh, on uh, Zoom to indicate that you have completed uh, the build uh, instruction, which is essentially the same as you have done in um, previous uh, sessions. So I think uh, we can go ahead and uh, get started. So uh, in in this session, uh, essentially we going to learn how to set up uh, XML files for uh, different combinations uh, of modules that are uh, in Jetscape framework. So we're gonna learn uh, how to configure a Python gun, a Pythia gun module. Uh, how to read uh, a pre-generated uh, soft sector uh, profile. Um, also learn about different parameter settings in uh, jet energy loss models, uh, matter, LBT, uh, Martini and so on. Um, and we're gonna try to do this uh, by uh, running uh, Jetscape for a few uh, setup uh, of modules uh, and visualize the Hard on shower uh, graph that um, um, that can be generated um, using GraphWiz software, and then we're gonna uh, look at compare few uh, setups uh, and look at the effect of uh, energy uh, jet energy loss in uh, single particle energy spectrum. Um, in this session, I'll also talk about how to configure a nuclear PDF. Um, in the case of uh, nucleus nucleus collision and also how to sim simulate proton proton uh, collision uh, and then we're going to look at um, effects uh, um, and compute uh, uh, jet cross section and look at jet fragmentation function and jet shape um, in this uh, jet session there will also be a part uh, for hydrodynamic uh, medium response in a strongly coupled approach. And this will be covered by uh, Monday uh, by Yasuki. So before we go any further, um, I would like to suggest you to follow the instructions uh, that are outlined um, in this web uh, GitHub uh, readme file. So, if you click on this file, essentially you land um, on this document that is here. It's on the summer school July 29 jets. And if you go here, uh, there are instructions uh, for, for the session. So I'll just go through uh, initial setup. Essentially, this is um, how you start uh, docker um, which you have done it in previous sessions update um, uh, git repository for uh, summer school 2020-2022 jetscape um, package and download the hydro profiles So, so I assume uh, everyone has done up to uh, this part here, which is essentially to build uh, Jetscape using uh, following external packages. So 
next uh, i think we can go ahead and um, do some um, pardon energy loss uh, and uh, run jetscape so the first um, i would like you to um, run a default xml file that is in this july 29 jets uh, config uh, directory so So essentially we're gonna run a uh, following uh, XML file and it will generate um, output uh, list of uh, final state pardons with the event history. This is just to check uh, if uh, everything is working properly. And um, we're gonna visualize the part on shower graph using uh, reader test. Um, which will require you to install graph with uh, software. So while this is running, um, let's go ahead and try to install this GraphWiz uh, software in our uh, local machine. So this should be done outside uh, Docker and depending on uh, which operating system you are using, um, one can install uh, the GraphWiz software using following instruction here. So. In my case, I already have uh, GraphWiz uh, software installed. Um, it's dot. So it's the package dot from uh, GraphWiz software. Um, so if you are on Mac, you would just do brew install graph phase. Um, so I see the, the uh, run Jetscape uh, is finished. Um, so if I go here, um, So if I go here, it generates a file uh, called test underscore uh, out dot dat. And this file, um, we're gonna run um, reader test, which is here. And reader test, uh, will read the test out and it will produce a um, the part on shower graph in in uh, dot gv uh, format so so in your case you would just do uh, dot slash uh, reader test 
and once it finishes it will um, produce a uh, graph format file here that is graph.cv um, so in order to visualize this one needs to use graph graph with uh, software and convert it into pdf file so in in this session we're gonna uh, look at the um, pardon shower graph for different uh, xml uh, files. So first, I would like you to um... uh, Amit uh, on the slack. I think uh, um, this person might run into problem when okay. trying to run JSCAD. Uh, no such file directory. Um... It could be his setup. Yeah, so are you running this uh, inside build of Jetscape build uh, directory? So the structure, uh, directory structure is assumed to be um, following. So So in principle, you have Jetscape and summer school package um, side by side um, at the same directory. And um, so inside Jetscape, uh, you have build directory and from where, from that particular location, you call the configuration file, which is inside uh, summer school 2022. So you should be able to find if you um, from the build directory itself, if the if you type the full address of that XML file, um, then you should be able to find it if um, you are following the same directory structure. So in my case, as I'm doing it, I I'm able to see the um, config step user physics so I, I can see if uh, if you do ls and the copy the full name uh, that you used in your run jetscape then it should show you the um, the path and does not it should not give any error so um, my suspicion is uh, there is something with your directory structure. So we'll, please try to follow the same similar directory structure or provide uh, the full path for, uh, for the XML file. So next uh, step we're gonna, going to do is re, uh, modify this reader test um, dot cc. Uh, essentially by default, the reader test dot cc doesn't take any argument. Um, and we're going, we are going to modify this uh, script uh, to take uh, argument. Um, is there any question? Okay, so we can open this uh, reader test uh, .cc and I'm gonna make it um, uh, have uh, two input argument, one to read the test out and the another argument would be to uh, provide the name of output file. So, um, so this, uh, we can edit this file outside uh, Docker. So reader test, this is in Jetscape example 
reader test dot cc um so cd here and then i'm gonna open this file So if you open your file, you will see that um, the input file name is uh, specified. And what we want to do is uh, modify this name and um, make it the first argument uh, of the executable. So that you can do is by um, modifying this name, uh, test out into ARGV, uh, one or you could simply the copy this line um, from the readme and paste it in here and we need also a second argument for the output file uh, for the graph that this file will generate so if you scroll down uh, you will see another uh, line that says m shower uh, save as gv uh, so essentially it is a file format um, in your case you will see uh, following line which we you can comment and insert a uh, another line by modifying um, this entry here into a second argument uh, another way you can just uh, copy this line from here um, in the readme and replace it So these two changes needs to be made uh, in the reader test. Um, and if you don't, uh, if you find any difficulty doing that, you could also go ahead. Um, there is a, um, already uh, these two arguments are provided. Uh, in the reader test, uh, but this file exists in summer school, uh, July 29. You can just uh, uh, copy this file and replace it inside example directory. So whichever one is easier for you, uh, please go ahead. So did everyone follow? Uh, the these modification in the reader test so if people can follow uh, please use uh, zoom um, green tick uh, yes mark So there is a question in Slack um, says inside Zscape Docker uh, external package, um, they have these different files. Um, so if you read uh, this uh, readme file here, you can find the instructions um, up here. If you go to the external directory, then you can find these different um files here lbt music iss um so basically these are shell script and you can execute them it will download these files here um and then the next step would be for you to um, build uh, jetscape using um, default method so So once you have made this modification, essentially make the reader test um, have two arguments. First argument is the input file and the second argument is the output file. Um, and now we'll go into the uh, Docker again and to make 
since you have modified a uh, source file inside Jetscape framework, you need to rebuild, uh, do remake, um, but it will only um, uh, see the change that you have made. Uh, so it should not take much time and it will just recompile that particular file. So in my case, uh, I did this um, rebuild the code and basically uh, recompiled and took the changes that I made in reader test. Um, and now we are ready to um, go ahead and proceed with our uh, exercise. So the first exercise is to uh, configure XML files uh, and use the Parton gun module and matter vacuum module. So the XML file for uh, this particular setup is uh, located in summer school, um, July 29 jets config, um, jetscape user pgun matter vacuum dot XML. So Essentially, we're gonna run uh, our Jetscape code for this particular XML file, and then use reader test um, um, to visualize the part on shower graph uh, that generates from this. So first, let me just talk about the, uh, the modules that are in this particular XML file uh, before you go and run this setup. So the first exercise is to use uh, Pardon Gun module and Matter Vacuum Shower. So Pardon Gun module is essentially uh, used to uh, generate a, a single uh, parton um, with a specific momentum and specific flavor. So uh, the it has a following. Uh, flags, uh, so the par ID essentially represents the particle ID. So if you set it to one, it means um, <clears throat> you are uh, creating a, the parton gun will create a down quark. Uh, if you set it to 21, then it will create uh, a glue on. Um, and this is, this module is basically belongs to the base class, uh, which is hard. Um, essentially, uh, it is a uh, base class to generate hard uh, partons. Um, and then there is another flag uh, that says PT100. Uh, essentially, it means uh, you specify the initial um, PT of the uh, parton that this parton gun will generate. Uh, essentially, it will set uh, different momentum to following values here. Um, to load matter uh, vacuum shower, this one belongs to the base class um, uh, E loss. And matter module has uh, various flags uh, shown here. Uh, the Q naught uh, set to one, this is the virtuality, final virtuality uh, of the parton up to which uh, matter will do uh, evolution. And this is also used in, in two stage model or more, uh, it can be used um, as a switching virtuality parameter. Uh, to turn on the vacuum energy loss, uh, this flag here in vacuum, uh, we set it to one to uh, just look at the vacuum shower and all other flag we set it to zero recoil on, broadening on brick medium, uh, these ones. So we're gonna use uh, following uh, simple, um, XML file and generate one um, event. So essentially the, the down quark uh, undergoing vacuum radiation and we'll see, we'll visualize um, part on shower graph. 
So uh, let's now go back to our exercise here. Um, so essentially this XML file is in uh, summer school, July 29 jets config, uh, jetscape user vegan uh, matter vacuum. So we go here, we can see So right now I'm in uh, example directory. On the Slack, um, William um, asked, is there a way to choose component? X, P, X, P, Y of the bottom momentum. I don't know what he means like. Yeah, I mean, oh. uh, if you want to, um, uh, change uh, different components and select, uh, let's say Z component or uh, Y component, you have to look at the source file for this uh, Pagan uh, module. So if I go here uh, in, in Jetscape, um, so this Pagan module belongs to the initial state and you can go to the source code pagan.cc um, and if you go to the exec function, um, you can read uh, how the PT is controlling uh, different components. Uh, essentially right now it is configured um, to set X and Y components, um, but one can uh, modify uh, individual components uh, uh, using this source file. So let me go back to my exercise here. Um, so I'll open this XML file. Um, Pagan matter vacuum. So if I see uh, if I see here, um, this is the base class for hard scattering. We load Pagan module here uh, with uh, PT hundred and particle ID one, and the base class for energy loss module, and then uh, a particular energy loss module, in this case, matter vacuum. Um, and I have this vacuum flag on. And if you don't, if you want to do in medium, you would turn this uh, off by setting it to zero. And then it would operate matter in, in medium uh, form. Um, but then one has to load, uh, specify what, type of medium uh, needs to use. And here we have uh, different um, ASCII writers. Um, so this particular one that says Jetscape writer ASCII, it is to write full history of um, event. Um, and if you just interested in final state partons, you can turn on this particular writer uh, and if you are just interested in final state hadrons, you can turn on this flag. If you want to have all three output files, you can turn on uh, all three. Uh, it should be okay. And one important thing is that one needs to specify the output file name uh, that um, will be generated where all the uh, pardons are history and final state pardon and hadrons would be saved. Um, so for each XML file, you should have uh, a, a unique name uh, for the output file. So, so we'll uh, use this particular XML file and right now we're gonna set, uh, just generate one event uh, and look at the pardon shower graph. Um, so, I'm gonna go to uh, Jetscape uh, directory inside our Docker container in order to run this. So to run this uh, particular XML file, so you would go inside build directory and you can copy this command. Um, and run this. So 
So essentially it ran and uh, I expect it to produce a uh, output file with this name that is here. Um, so if we go here, um, so I can see this particular file uh, being generated and this file will uh, contain um, the full history of the part on shower and we will use reader test um, to uh, generate a part on shower graph so next uh, we'll copy this command here essentially the first argument is the input file with the part on shower history and second uh, input is the uh, name of output file. So if I go here, so this reader test essentially um, does is it uses a GTL graph um, uh, search um, and generates the part on shower graph in um, graph with format so you will see a output file for the graph um, in the build directory and next step would be to convert this um, uh, graph file which is not in pdf format uh, in order for us to visualize we can convert this into pdf format and that we would use um, uh, graph with software using dot so for this uh, to convert this uh, we'll go out to build directory but outside docker and run following command so essentially this command takes um, the graph format file as uh, input here and then the name that you specify after uh, dash o is the name that you want for the pdf file uh, if you want different name you can uh, change this name um, so first we're going to go into jetscape build directory but from outside docker um, and make sure that graph is, is installed uh, in your um, local machine so i'm going to go here uh, jetscape build And I see that graph uh, file is here and I need to convert this into PDF file. So copy this command. And I see here that um, if you do LS, you can see the, the file is generated and you can open this particular uh, file using um, uh, going to a folder and just clicking it or you can open from terminal as well um, whichever works uh, for you so we just need to visualize this uh, pdf file you will see a following kind of uh, graph um, appearing and you will see these different numbers uh, on the arrow um, so this one is for vacuum so you only have one to two uh, splittings in, in the part on shower graph. Um, and these different number, I uh, explained them in, in the PDF file uh, in the hands-on uh, session lecture. Uh, so if you go here, essentially the first number corresponds to the energy and uh, second number uh, is PT. And then um, this is uh, Q square, and then the last entry is PID. Uh, so particle ID is one. And then it's uh, here, the particle ID is 21. So it emits a glue on. And then again, uh, you have particle ID 21, it emits a glue on uh, and so on. So this is uh, essentially how to use the parton gun with the matter vacuum shower. Uh, you can set uh, different number of events and 
the second step would be to actually set um, generate thousand events using this setup and look at DND spectrum. Um, so before we go into that, uh, let's go and visualize Pardon Shower Graph for a different uh, setup um, and run matter um, with a hydrodynamic medium. So this is our second exercise. Um, essentially, it's same. You're gonna run Jetscape with um, with the Pigan module, uh, matter module, but load the hydrodynamic profile. So how how to do that? Um, uh, just let me explain the XML file here. Um, so <clears throat> we have by default uh, the same setup for uh, the Pigan. Uh, specifying a down quark with PT100 GeV um, and matter module. Uh, these are the different flags uh, for matter module. Um, here, uh, since we want to do in medium energy loss, so in presence of um, um, QGP, so I set in vacuum flag to zero. Uh, and then we need to specify what is the strong coupling. Um, in medium coupling constant. So here I'm setting it to 0.2. Uh, one can change this coupling to see different uh, effects uh, from matter alone, energy loss module. Um, in, in the hydro uh, module, uh, this hydro tag here represents the base class. And there are different ways to generate a hydrodynamic medium. So here I'm using a pre-generated um, hydro event file, and this is the format to load um, in Jetscape uh, a hydro profile that is saved in the following directory. Um, and depending on how many hydro profiles you have, one needs to account uh, for this flag here that says n reuse hydro. Essentially, this flag allows you to read a, a given hydro profiles for multiple jet events. Uh, and one should have a uh, following constraint on and you reuse hydro. Otherwise it could um, uh, lead to error because um, you may not have more hydro profiles. Um, uh, like it has to be consistent. Then reuse hydro should be consistent with the total number of jet events that you want to generate. Um, and the number of hydro event files you have. So this is the setup uh, one, one can uh, use to uh, do a look at the energy loss of single parton going through hydrodynamic medium using matter um, in medium energy loss. Uh, and we're gonna look at the parton shower graph uh, here also. Uh, so just, We'll copy this command here uh, to generate uh, the graph file. So so essentially this line is to tell tells you that it, it loaded the hydro profiles and these are the grid parameters and it finished uh, successfully. The next, uh, so once you do that, you will see that the, there is another uh, test out file that is generated uh, that says test out pgun uh, matter without recoil dot dat here. Um, so we'll use this file and use reader test. Um, to generate uh, the graph and see the modifications in the splittings. Um, so essentially because of these uh, medium kicks, you should expect to have uh, more uh, gluon radiation from the parton and uh, to visualize that we can convert this uh, graph file into a PDF file. So this command should be done inside build directory, but outside uh, Docker. So go here. Um, 
So I see that there is a graph file being generated and we convert this into PDF. <laughs> So now I should have a PDF file uh, for the part on shower graph for this particular setup. And I can open this um, PDF file and you will see uh, a graph that looks like this. Uh, so essentially the initial part on uh, flavor and energy is same, but when you turn on in medium um, uh, energy loss, you have more, uh, glue on radiation because it changes the these transfer kicks that you will get from the medium changes the uh, off cellness of the uh, hard part on um, so so this is the same uh, graph that i just showed um, Next, I would like to talk about this multi-stage, uh, how to load multi, uh, two modules, energy loss modules together and uh, use recoils uh, in matter and LBT phases. So essentially um, I'm just uh, highlighting here uh, new components um, that are there. Um, so, the the part on gun generation is similar um the hydro module that i just talked about in previous xml file um so now here uh, we have two uh, energy loss modules um we are loading matter and lbt uh, matter for high virtuality so here this parameter q naught is used to uh, separate the boundary between uh, high virtuality phase and uh, low virtuality phase so here we are setting it to 2 GeV. Uh, you can change this parameter to see the effect uh, of this particular parameter um, in the final state observables. Um, and to turn on the recoil in matter phase, you have uh, this flag here that says recoil on. Um, and this switching virtuality para parameter has to be consistent between these modules. Uh, otherwise you will encounter error. Um, and in the LBT module, this is the, these are the following uh, uh, flags. Uh, so the in medium coupling here, um, setting also same as the in medium coupling in matter alpha is 0.2. Um, and we have running alpha uh, flag also in LBT phase. And recoil, there is no uh, separate flag for recoils in LBT. It's uh, by default on um, in, um, LBT module. So we will use um, following setup uh, and run Jetscape uh, and visualize uh, part on shower graph. And we will just generate one event. Um, so let me go ahead and go to the third exercise. Um, so the XML file is um, here. So here we have set n events to one. So we just want to generate one event. Um, usually if you want to generate more event, it's uh, going to be time computationally. So here I'm just uh, staying as uh, considering one and just generating one event. Um, and these are different flag uh, I just talked about and order uh, in the XML file does matter. Um, in the XML file, if you load this hydro modules after energy loss modules, it's uh, it's not gonna work. Um, it's uh, uh, so order in which I, the part on propagates it. Uh, one one has to take into account. So hydro module has to be loaded before you propagate jets on on top of it. Um, is there any question uh, on Slack? Uh,
I see there is a question. What is the meaning of vertex label uh, point three? So these are the different time steps in in which uh, jet energy loss happens. So the DT is set to uh, point one. So every point step uh, uh, you compute the splittings basically. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, look at this particular setup. So now we're gonna run this uh, as usual, but with different XML file. You'll see these warnings here uh, that no initial state module uh, fa found here. Um, and one would need to, um, if you want to specify uh, where does the, the hard part on is produced, one can load the initial state module. And uh, this will, I will cover when I talked about a nucleus nucleus collision, how to uh, load initial state module um, and more detail on uh, uh, in general about proton proton and nucleus nucleus collision. There is a question on Slack ask how to turn on coherence effect. Um, so in, in matter phase, um, there are different, um, uh, functional form for Q hat. So the coherence effect, uh, there is one particular parameterization where this is included, uh, coherence effect. Um, and I believe it's parameterization five, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if, if you go and open master XML file, you can find um, various possible, all possible flags that a energy loss module uh, has. So if you go here, you will see uh, the, there is this particular flag that says Q hat parameterization type and you can pick different uh, parameterization. So if you want a steel formula with both alpha S and front fixed, you will set it to zero, uh, this flag here. If you want uh, the running uh, alpha S and the other alpha S to be fixed, which will be tuning parameter, set it to one and then so on. And then this parameterization type five, this is for uh, including uh, coherence effect uh, through modifying the uh, Q hat. So if I go to um, <clears throat> uh, Jetscape run, it is finished. Uh, so now we can go ahead and move to uh, a reader, reader test uh, run. And this will generate the graph for this particular setup where you have PGAN and matter plus LBT module. There is a, on the Zoom chat, there's a question um, by Andrew Cordier said that, what is the meaning of the vertex label? Like, Two and then I assume the first number is the index of pardon. Is the number yes? Is, I mean, yeah, it's time? the time. It's the time. Yes. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, use uh, convert this into PDF format, and this is we're gonna do outside uh, build directory. So now I see here a PDF file is generated and one can visualize. Um, and essentially when you turn on matter and LBT in medium energy loss, both of them, it's uh, you have these uh, big part on uh, shower graph generated uh, because LBT is uh, a module with where the multiple scatterings are uh, dominant. 
So essentially, this is uh, effect from um, LBT module. And you will see new arrows uh, being generated in the part on shower graph with the green line. So just let me explain the part on shower graph that is generated. So essentially, you see a graph that looks like this. Um, and the, the green arrow uh, represents the hole that is sampled from the medium and eventually it, it uh, undergoes scattering with the uh, jet parton and uh, here you see different colors uh, the blue and black as well so here it is to separate the uh, the virtuality phases uh, essentially so the black uh, arrows they, they represent that the parton is still in uh, high virtuality phase or the q above two. So in, in our case, we had this as a switching virtuality parameter. And the, the blue arrow represents here the parton is in low virtuality phase. So virtuality is below uh, two GeV. Um, <clears throat> so once you have done that, um, next uh, we would like to use uh, these two set up that uh, I discussed the parton gun. So you generate one parton and let it uh, undergo matter vacuum shower. In another case, we will generate the same parton, but let it go through a hydrodynamic medium and we will have uh, matter and LBT energy loss with recoils. And we'll compare these two setup um, uh, by looking at um, energy spectrum of final state uh, partons. So, um, we're going to go ahead and modify the XML files uh, for these two set up uh, and set an events to 1000. And once you do that, you will see that uh, the code will take um, uh, quite a bit of time when you turn on the in medium um, matter and LBT. So this is the next uh, exercise that I would like to cover. Um, does people have questions? Um, and are people able to follow up to this point? Please use a green tick mark uh, in the Zoom. So, okay, let's, uh, I see um, quite many people being able to follow up to this point. So um, we'll go ahead and proceed with this exercise here. So essentially we want to open uh, following XML file, um, the pgan matter vacuum and set n events to thousand and open Jetscape user pgan hydro matter LBT. Uh, both of these XML files are inside config directory in the summer school um, jet session folder. So let's go ahead and open these. Um, open this first XML file. So we set it to 1000, uh, total number of uh, events here. Um,
So here uh, for the in medium case, I also set same number of events. Um, the N reuse hydro is set to 10,000. So which is larger than this uh, particular number. And why uh, we set it to larger than this uh, number uh, of N events is because we only have one hydro profiles in this particular directory. If you have more number of hydro profiles, then you can um, reuse them in, in, in several, um, several times. But since we have only one hydro profile, so you want to use it for all uh, jet events. So it has to be either equal to the N events or greater than uh, this number here. So, so we made this change and now let's go ahead and run the first scenario, which is pig and matter vacuum. Oh, sorry. So we need to go to uh, uh, inside Docker and run Jetscape and So for the vacuum case, it the, the runs are usually pretty fast. Um, for the in medium case, you will see a bit slow down in the event generation. And here we are just focusing on thousand events and only one part on is going through the medium. Um, okay, let's see. There is a there is a question uh, on Slack from uh, from Luis Osra. He asked, "I just want to be sure in a simulation the high final hard on brains in air collision is because of VT." I think as people already answered that question already. Yeah, so yeah. the the more number of splittings that you are seeing is mainly due to the LBT contribution. Mm. Uh, I just want to correct it's not the hadron because uh, I didn't turn on the hadronization module. So it's still you are seeing part on um, structure there. Yeah. So I'll wait for a few minutes for people to essentially finish uh, running the Jetscape for these two XML file and generate the um, test out uh, output files for those. Um, so once you, once you complete this, you will have a list of final uh, state partons. And basically we want to look at the energy of those partons and uh, construct uh, the spectrum and the constructing the histogram uh, we're going to do it using Jup uh, Jupyter uh, notebook um, so next uh, we have maybe 10 minutes left I think 13 uh, minutes left so we'll see how much uh, we can proceed um, and next uh, other uh, part of the exercises will be covered on Monday uh, hands-on session. Um, so no need to uh, rush. Okay, so for the matter vacuum uh, case, the I've generated thousand events and let's go and generate events. Uh, for uh, matter uh, LBT with the hydro case.
so for tomorrow's session uh, i would like you to um, have uh, these two uh, commands run in essentially generate um, the pp events and led led uh, events um, so run this uh, xml file and generate the data and i'll talk about how uh, we are configuring uh, proton proton and um, generating hard collision events in in the case of lead lead and talk about nuclear pdf uh, on the monday uh, hands on session so try to generate uh, two uh, so as instruction says here 250 hard scattering events um, so you don't need to modify anything everything is um, already uh, set in this xml file but please try to complete these uh, to um, generate the data uh, for these two as it can take uh, quite a bit of time uh, especially for the uh, nucleus nucleus uh, collision case um, and have these uh, output files ready and then we will do the analysis um, and look at different uh, spectrums for jets and um, inclusive jets, uh, jet fragmentation function and jet shape. Amit, in yes. the line where you said uh, generate 250 events, um, can you just go back? What What's that sim? What, uh, so 100 less than PT hat? Yes, this is, uh, okay, I see there is a some typo here. It should be just the sign for less than. So it is the range for PT at min, PT at max, and it is already set in the XML file uh, for PP and uh, let let scenario. Um, so we're gonna just generate uh, by focusing into following PT at bin range. Um, So essentially these uh, things are, uh, you don't need to modify anything on the XML file. Um, so for the A case, as you can see, it will take uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, I'll just explain uh, uh, how to generate the or what these different flags are. And we will complete this uh, exercise uh, on Monday hands-on session, including the PP and um, uh, A spectrums. So in less, last, uh, I guess uh, in 10 minutes, I would like to talk about the, um, how to generate events for the PP and um, nucleus nucleus collision case uh, in 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 context of hard scattering um, so for the proton proton collision we use um, a module called pythia gun um, and you can specify a range for the q square exchange that mac uh, that happens between the two partons um, undergoing hard collision. And the, these ranges are uh, essentially uh, controlling the maximum value of allowed uh, Q-square transfer in, in the proton-proton uh, collision at parton level. And center of mass energy for proton-proton collision, we are setting it to five uh, TeV uh, here. And <clears throat> in the case of heavy ion collision, um, we still need to provide uh, PT at min, PT at max, which is essentially the uh, phase space for the hard scattering. Um, in addition to this, you want to um, provide uh, nuclear PDF uh, for uh, modification into uh, regular PDF of, of proton. So here uh, there are different uh, flags that one can pass um, under lines to read uh, in the um, Pythia gun itself. And essentially uh, uh, in this particular setup, uh, in, in by default in Pythia, it includes um, 
a P, uh, various sets for nuclear PDF. Uh, a and B here means the colliding uh, species. So A is coming from one direction and the B is coming from negative uh, Z direction. Uh, when you set it to one, so it essentially means um, the nuclear PDF that it will use is the EPS09. This is a default P, P, nuclear uh, PDF in um, uh, Pythia. Um, and one can specify what uh, kind of nucleus uh, this uh, average nuclear nucleon PDF corresponds to. Uh, and that specified by uh, the specifying the beam type. So here, uh, this is the ID for lead uh, nucleus. So essentially, if these uh, modification will have um, uh, nuclear PDF effects included um, and will generate, use this particular module to generate the hard scattering, but then uh, to assign the location of hard scattering one needs to uh, load initial state module um, essentially the this pythagon module will read um, the location of binary collision uh, from uh, initial state module and there are various ways uh, to generate this binary collision profile in this particular session we are going to load pre-generated um, initial state uh, uh, di uh, distribution. Uh, so essentially providing this uh, same directory that you used in the hydro profile, it, it comes with um, initial state profile and hydrodynamic medium file. So this will be our setup to generate hard scattering events in PP and uh, nucleus nucleus collision. And we're going to use the energy loss modules uh, to generate um, uh, jet events. And then we will look at uh, these different uh, spectrums. So essentially, I would like you to uh, complete uh, the event generation uh, for these parts uh, over the weekend. Um, you don't need to modify any of these XML file that are shown here. Uh, you would run these XML file and generate and collect the statistics. And then we will use Jupyter uh, Notebook and visualize uh, spectrums. So as you guys see in the PP, it's already set, number of events are set um pythagon module is loaded and matter is loaded for vacuum uh shower and then we have a hadronization module um uh, also loaded and there are various different um ways to do the hadronization in this particular setup we focus on colorless hadronization module um and if i open the file for uh lead lead case uh, here there is a, i don't know whether you see that there is a question or somebody's answering that already uh, on slack uh, yeah so okay. in the lead lead scenario we will just try to focus on 250 events you can increase uh, these number of events uh, it, it will increase your run time um, essentially, for this scenario, you, you need to load the initial state uh, binary collision profile that is red uh, when you downloaded this um, uh, soft sector profile. And for the Pythia hard scattering with uh, nuclear PDF effects from lead uh, nucleus, um, these strings are provided in tag that says lines to read. Um, and then you have hydro module um, to load the hydrodynamic medium. And then you have energy loss module. So here we are doing matter and LBT. So uh, all this is already configured. You don't need to change these parameters. Um, 
So once you generate the events for this uh, XML file, one can proceed with the analysis. So does people uh, were able to follow what they uh, needs to do uh, for these exercises? I don't see any response on Slack or on the Zoom chat. So I guess uh, we'll stop here and um, uh, discuss um, later part uh, of these exercises um, in the next um, Monday hands-on session. Okay. Uh, sure. let, let me let me ask whether there's any final questions um, from the students. And uh, and before uh, I think uh, so, Yasuki will also be uh, covering this uh, jet medium response uh, exercise. That is um, the last part of the jet session. Um, I just want to take some time if uh, Yasuki wants to uh, say something for a prerequisite uh, or something. There is a question on the on 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 WeChat. Okay, somebody answers. So what what are the codes we need to run by Monday? And 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 then somebody's answer is three point one or three point two. Yes. So <clears throat> only you need to generate this uh, data. Uh, test out files because it will take time and during the hands-on session you should not um, do that uh, so 3.1 here 3.2 here basically use these xml file and run um, jetscape and generate um, uh, following list of final state hadrons for these two scenario and uh, we'll also talk about um, this DNDE spectrum uh, analysis um, on the Monday hands-on session. Okay, I think uh, we are going to uh, close for today. And then if you have further uh, follow, follow up question, you can always put it on the Slack and think we can continue uh, offline. Okay. Let's thank Amit again.